you know, praise the Lord. So in this service, we're going to have a great man of God share from us. Um, we're starting a church in Ikeja Jiyabri, which is on our campuses. And Pastor Komea has been in the ministry for forever. Yeah, he's been here for 18 years. 18 years, he's been here for 18 years in the ministry. So Pastor Komea is sharing. Let's appreciate Pastor Komea as he shares the word of God. Thank you. Pastor Bolaji, right now, my father, your father, we can do better than that. We can do better than that. Glory to God. You may please be seated. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Wow. Okay, so we're going to be moving with the speed of light. So you need to follow me closely. Are we ready? Are we ready? Let's open our Bibles to 1 John chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. 1 John chapter 3. Glory to God, and I'm going to be reading quickly. It says, hereby, John, John speaking, Apostle John speaking, says, hereby perceive we the love of God, because he had laid down his life for us. It says, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Verse 17, it says, but whoso hath this world's goods, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him. It says, how dwelleth the love of of God in him. Praise the name of the Lord. It is very coincidental that 1 John 3.16 is very similar to John 3.16. And many of us know John 3.16. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever will believe in him will not perish but have what? Everlasting life. So John was telling us uh, that this is the love of God. You see, the correct rendering actually is not that for so, God so loved the world. It actually says that this is how God loved the world. This is how God demonstrated his love by giving his son. Now, it is as though 1 John 3.16 is now a continuation of John 3.16. It's saying now that we have received the love of God, our response is to also demonstrate that love to others. Glory to God. This is what John is saying. This is what the Bible is saying. It's saying if you have a brother that is in need or a sister that is in need and you shut up your bowels of compassion towards that brother, he says, how dwelleth the love of God in you? That means how can you say you have the love of God? How can you say you have, re you have received the love of God? Glory to God. One of the things we need to realize that Jesus loved us. That God loves us and he demonstrated it by giving his son. Praise the name of the Lord. It's something to think about. So how did he do this? Because he came, he suffered, he died, he was buried. And glory to God, on the third day he rose. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory to God. So why did he have to suffer? This is some of the questions that people ask. Why did Jesus have to suffer? What was, was the whipping necessary? Was the scourging necessary? Was the crucifixion, crucifixion necessary? It, it was necessary. Praise the name of the Lord. It was necessary. Isaiah chapter 53, verse, chapter 53 from 3 to 5, tells us why he had to go through that. He says he bore our iniquities. He says the, the, the chastisement of his peace was upon us, and by his stripes we were healed. So he went through the suffering for our sake. He took the punishment for our sake. The punishment was meant for us, but he took it on himself. Glory to God. You see, you need to understand that the Bible says that to, when, when Adam sinned, he said that if you eat of this fruit, that was the sin, that you shall die. That was the sin. There was a consequence. Death was supposed to come. It wasn't just death physically, but eternal death, separation from God because Death means separation. So when a man, when we say a man is dead, but you see the body, the body is intact. In fact, if you don't look at the person very well, you might say the person is sleeping. Praise the name of the Lord. So what really is death? Death is separation of the spirit from the body. Eternal death is the separation of the spirit from God eternally. Glory to God. Praise the name of the Lord. So this was the consequence. But Jesus came to pay the price. Let me explain it to you this way, and I'll be very quick with this. I've always used this illustration. It's very powerful. Imagine two twin. No, no it can't be two twin now. It's one twin, right? Okay. It's English, English. Idea, idea is need. You know, just 
a twin, two brothers, identical. You know, and they are princes of a great kingdom. There was a king. One was very kind and very nice to people. Everybody loved him. Nice prince. But the other one was very mean. He took advantage of his royal position to snatch things from people, to ill-treat people, right? So one day, he got into a scuffle with one of the subjects of the kingdom. And in, the, in that scuffle, by accident or intentionally, he killed the guy. So the villagers had had it up to their neck. And they said, we are going to kill this guy today. Enough is enough. So they chased him all the way to the palace. So when he got to the palace, and the king saw that these villagers are going to kill this guy, the palace, in, in the bid to save the boy, the king said, okay, don't worry. Don't do anything to him. I will punish him. But going forward, from this time forward, if anybody kills anybody, it's instant death. And one of them now said, it's okay. So the boy goes again and kills another person. This time, he was running. He couldn't go to the king because he knew what would happen. And the villagers had license to kill him. So he began to run. And as he was running, he saw his twin brother from afar, the good one. And that one came. So he pulled him into a corner. I said, what happened? The villagers after me. They are going to kill me. Daddy can't save me this time because I killed somebody. He now said, you know what are you doing? I will give you what I'm wearing. You give me what you're wearing. I've lived a good life. I want you to live a better life. He now takes it and they exchange. So the good brother runs out. And because they only recognize the clothing he was wearing, they go after him and they kill him. And the other brother now lives in his place. That's what Jesus did for us. He died not only for us, but as us. He didn't just die for us. He died as us. But that's not where the story ends. He was buried as us. And he rose as us. Hallelujah. No wonder the Bible says, as he is in heaven, so are we on this earth. Glory to God. He has taken what is of ours and taken it and has taken what is of his and put it on us. Glory to God. Glory to God. We need to understand that. So Jesus died to identify with us. He suffered so that he could identify with us. What does this mean? Because sometimes it just sounds like English. Let me give you another illustration to buttress that point further. How many of us play video games? I, I used to be a video game enthusiast, but, you know, old age has taken everything. I'm not that old. I don't really play games anymore. But when I was younger, <laughs> it was bad. So when you play video games, let's say Mortal Kombat or FIFA, when you're playing the game, there, there's sort of physical action going on in, on the screen. When they fall down, you, even in FIFA, they will simulate how normal players fall down and hold their leg. But you, they are, they are playing. Do you feel the pain? When you jump, do you jump? Whatever they do, you are the one controlling them. But you cannot relate with whatever is going on because you are not on that dimension. Do you understand what I'm saying? The video game is two-dimensional. You, you are three-dimensional. So you are not in that level of life. You can't understand what they are going through. Like, for example, when they give somebody a cut like Mortal Kombat, you don't feel it because you are not in that dimension. It's the same way with God. The Bible says that God is the one that dwells in unapproachable light. The invisible God that dwells in unapproachable light. You must remember that God, Jesus, is the creator of the universe. So when he created the universe, he is outside the principles and the laws that hold the universe together. You don't understand. We are under the control of gravity. Jesus, or God rather, let me use God for the, for the purpose of this um, illustration. God is outside it. God is not in time. Time is in God. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's why he can exist in the past, in the present, and in the future. All at once. Because everything is in him. So, ordinarily, God may not be able to identify with a human because he's outside that dimension. So you know what he did? He clothed himself in flesh. He clothed himself. He said, I don't want to be far from my people. That's why the songwriter said that he couldn't be in heaven without us. He had to come down. Glory to God. He clothed himself in the flesh and came to feel what we feel. 
I came to experience what we experience. He experienced hunger. He experienced thirst. He saw people f- fall sick. He saw he, Lazarus died. Even though he had the power to raise him up from the dead, he still cried. Why? Because we cried to glory to God. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 now says, this is why we do not have a high priest that cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. He says we can come boldly into his throne of grace and receive mercy and grace at any time of need. Glory to God. He says we can come and take it. It's available. Mercy and grace. Because he understands us. He knows how we feel. That is his identity. He identifies with us. And more than that, he didn't just take on our humanity. He gave us his divinity. <laughs> Glory to God. He says, even though I can feel your pain, you don't have to feel pain anymore. Even though I can feel poverty, you don't have to feel poverty anymore. I have broken the backs of all those things and I've given you power. He says, go, I have given you authority over serpents, over scorpions, over demons, over the elements of the world. Glory to God. There was an exchange on the cross. There was an exchange. I love the way Pastor Bolaji puts it at the NLP conference. He said the cross represents something. He said before the cross, there were the Jews, there were the Gentiles. There was a middle wall of partition, right? Separating the Jews. So the Jews were God's own people, but the Gentiles were estranged. And if you don't know, let me just announce to you, we fall under the category of the Gentiles. Hey, if not for Jesus, where would we be? Glory to God. You don't understand, when we're Gentiles, we could not know God. Hey, I don't have time to explain that. We could not know him. So, when Jesus came, when he died, his right side, for example, representing the Jews. His left side, representing the Gentiles. Going upward, that's the cross pointing upwards, representing divinity. Going downwards, touching the earth, was representing humanity. So, what did Jesus do? On the cross, he brought everything into one man. So that there is neither Gentile, nor Jew, nor Greek. He said, everything is now one in the man in Christ. So, divinity and humanity has been married in us because of Christ. Glory to God. There was a time where poverty will come. You say, what will I do now? You can speak to it. Hey, he says, have faith in God. He says, you shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea. And if you believe what you say, he says, you shall have whatsoever you say. Praise the name of the Lord. Where the word of a king is, there is power. And he has made us kings and priests unto God. Hallelujah. Amen. This is why he came. Glory to God. He came to redeem us. So how should we respond to his love? Number one, by loving others. By loving others. Glory to God. First John chapter 1 verse 7. Because of time I may not read it, but if they put it on the screen we can read it. This, we can, so we can have fellowship with others. You see, a lot of us come to church, but we don't know what church is about. You just come to church to fulfill a ritual. You come to church because you want to mark an attendance in your mind to say that I was in church. But what, really, what does it really mean to come to church? Apart from worshiping God, it's also to fellowship with one another. That's why I have a problem with some folks that even up till now, after COVID, they are still online. Glory to God. When you say, why are you in church? No, I was in church. I say, say, where? You say, online. I say, my brother, my sister, can you get married online? Okay, let's even assume that that can be done. Can you have children online? What I mean, can you have children online? You know what I'm talking about, sir? Exactly. If you can do it online, please see me. (laughs) Praise the Lord. Can you have children? No. Can you raise a family online? So why do you want to do God's family online? Praise the name of the Lord. The church is meant for fellowship. You see some of us, we come into church, our face like Stone Cold Steve Austin. Pastor Bola, you say, look to your neighbor, smile. And you keep up that, that face just because you don't want anybody to get close. You don't want anybody to touch you. You don't want anybody to offend you. Glory to God. Glory to God. But that's wrong. You don't understand that Part of love is forgiveness. Yeah. 
I love how Jesus Christ said it. My words, I'm going to act it out. This is not how Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was about to, as he was already about to go. He just said, hey, let me come back. He said, remember I told you, love your neighbor as yourself. I'm paraphrasing. No, it's not this way. Don't go start looking at how did he say it like that? I'm just trying to give you a, so this is like, uh -huh. you love your, they said, oh yes, you said that. He said, now, love your neighbor, not as yourself anymore, but as I have loved you. Why? He knows that there is no greater, he said, there's no greater love than this, than for a man to lay down his life for his friend. He said, this is the kind of love that I want, because he knew that there will be offense. So he said that if you can lay down your life, what is the offense? You can forgive. The same way, when they were whipping him, he knew that this centurion that was whipping him, mocking him, putting the cross on his head, the same sacrifice was for that centurion. The centurion was not exempted. The people that lied, cheated, did everything, all of them were part of the salvation package. That's why he says you can, you can easily love your friend, but the real test of love is if you can love your enemy. Praise the name of the Lord. So he's saying, let's love one another. Number two, let's respond through service. Let's serve. Some of us come to church week in, week out. Some of us have been in church for four years. There was a guy I saw one time. I just said, I thought I was even a new person. I said, oh, are you in church? What do you do in church? He laughed. Pastor, I've been here for 14 years. He was even saying you do boldness. I said, and for 14 years, you have not done anything. And you are proud. The way you're even saying it, that, ah, Pastor, you mean you've just seen me for 14 years? I'm walking. My SSS game is working well. I was just looking at him. You have nothing on your name. No record. You don't know what the Bible says concerning service. He says, whatever you do to the least of my brothers, he says, you have done unto me. God takes notes. How do I know? He will ask. He will tell you what you did. He said, when I was in the hospital, you came to visit me. When I was there, you did this. When I was hungry, you did this. When I was coming into church, you gave me a chair to sit. You are an usher. When I was parking my car, you helped me park well. He says, whatever you do to the least, to the least, he says, you are doing it to me and I'm taking note of it. He's taking notes. He's recording it. So what are you doing for God? What is your faith story? What would, the, what would they say about you? Hebrews chapter 11. See a great faith story. He said they stopped the mouth of lions. We, cannot, we don't have time to talk about Barak, Jephthah. What would they say about you? When you are coming, will Jesus stand up because a general is coming? Or will he just say, I beg, make it just pass. Make it just go. Glory to God. So serve in the house of God. Glory to God. Number three. Respond through generosity. This is how God demonstrated his love. He gave. Pastor Bolaji was talking about sharing gifts in service. Some of us will hear, hear, hear. We'll be looking for gifts under the chair. Meanwhile, we didn't put any gifts there. <laughs> Meanwhile, we, we, we are, as Pastor Bolaji said, look under your, you looked under your chair, you looked under your neighbor's chair, looked under the chair in front, looking for gifts. But meanwhile, you didn't put gifts under anybody's chair. Just think about it. If you got a gift, you know how you felt. For those people that God gives, see the feeling. Why don't you want to extend that feeling to somebody else? Be generous. We are having 30 days. Of this 30 days of mercy and generosity. How many of us have participated? What you are saying is that you are, you are, I'm a mercy collector. Please, I need mercy. Don't be a mercy collector. Be a mercy dispenser. Glory to God. Be a mercy dispenser. Give. Then finally, to respond to the love of God is to accept his love. You see, you might be in church every Sunday and still not know God. You might come to church and not know who he is. So it's not about coming to church. Have you accepted his love? Have you accepted him? Have you accepted his sacrifice? Praise the name of the Lord. It's so important. Just think about it. You're a wife. Your husband's birthday is coming up. You now spend two months planning the perfect gift. Going online. Calling people. How can I present this gift? What's the best way? Calling his sister, his mother. What does he like? What does he... His, his, his childhood friends. Can they be there? You do everything. You know, you are do, working as though they want to pay you money for it. But no, no, nothing. And you do it so well. And the day comes. 
and you present it in the most extravagant, flamboyant way. And your husband comes and says, is, is, is this what we eat? Is this what we eat? I beg, I'm going. And you, how will you feel? Some people will go and cry. Some people will carry the gift on his head and say, what kind of rubbish is that? Depending on your temperament. But the point is this. You will be disappointed. And because you, you did everything out of love, it will be very painful. This is how the Lord feels when you have rejected his flamboyant, extravagant sacrifice. That's the feeling that he feels. Glory to God. And some of us might have reasons. Maybe you are here, you are a skeptic. You are coming to church, but hey, anytime you are listening, mm, mm, how are we so sure these things are real? It's not people that wrote the Bible. Mm, when we get there, that's where we'll be. No, Jare, mm, I'm just coming because mommy and daddy has always been saying, you know, good people go to church and I'm a good person. Let me help you. Think about it this way. Let's agree. Let's leave the Bible one sec. Let's agree that it's a hoax. But you just take the chance and you believe. Because all of us will see the Lord. How do I know? Even if we don't think the Lord exists, death is inevitable. Best 150 years you live. You try very well. 150 years. Death is what? Inevitable. So one way or the other, we will all find out. Let's say you now go there and you get there and you realize that it's not real. There's no God. Nobody there. What have you lost? Nothing. You haven't lost anything. But now imagine that you don't believe. You draw your gra gra. And as you don't see, you open your eyes. The first thing you see is God. They don't even give you road. You know something? They'll give them tunnel. You still walk small. The first thing you see is God on the throne, intimidating, looking at you. And the Bible has said, after death comes what? Judgment. You can't go back. You can't beg. You can't plead. You can't say, give me one more chance. Logically, it doesn't make sense to turn down Christ. Number one point. Number two reason is that some people are turning down God because I was talking to one 16-year-old. I was preaching to her to get born again. After all my jealous, all my calisthenics, everything. I said, brother, I cannot give my life to Christ. I said, why? She said, ah, oh, this life sweet. I need to chop life. I said, at 16, which life do you want to? What are you planning for your life? She said, I need to chop this life. There was one other lady that they were speaking to. Somebody else was speaking to her. He said, that if Jesus can give you the power to overcome fornication, what would, I had not remember what because I didn't remember in the second. He said, what would you do? He said, ah, just when you Exactly, that, her words, not mine. She said, Jesu Onifete, meaning that, I don't know, what's, who knows the translation of that one? That, they, Jesu will not try it. You mean he wants to take away fornication from me? This thing that, what she does not understand is that this sex that she's holding on to, God created it for her. Is the same God that created sex. This money that you're holding on to, God created at least the concept of it because he said the heavens and the heavens belong to the Lord but the earth I have given to the sons of men so what you are doing in essence is that you are rejecting the creator for the created that's what you have done you are holding on to what was created and leaving the person that created it. It's just like meeting a billionaire and you, you are going through tough times and the billionaire meets you and you have a conversation and the billionaire just says, okay, I, I will help you but let's go to my office. Uh, hold, hold this 10,000. Hold this 10,000 naira. Just hold it. I don't know but just hold it now. Let me quickly get somewhere. And as you, the billionaire turns his back and goes, you, you turn your back and you just run away. He said, I'm going the cap. You now run away. Then the billionaire comes back and says, where is the guy? And holding in his hand is a check of $10 million. He says, where is the guy? And he said, ah, he ran away with 10000 When you reject salvation, you have left the greater for the lesser. Glory to God. With these few words of mine, I hope I've been able to convince you and not confuse you that Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Can we see? Glory to God. All right. If you are here and you have not accepted 
the Lord Jesus and you have not accepted his life the eternal life you've been coming to church you don't know what it is today you have heard the gospel it's time for you to receive it don't let this day stand against you don't let it stand against you receive his love this morning don't reject his love if you're with me just raise up your hand if you have not accepted Jesus today is the day not tomorrow today is the day of salvation lift up your hands above your head let the heaven rejoice over the soul that is saved today today is the day of salvation don't postpone it to another day nobody knows tomorrow only the Lord knows do it today lift up your hand clearly above your head I want to pray with you I want to lead you to this eternal bliss with the lover of our souls the captain of our salvation lift up your hands thank you my brother brother thank you so much thank you my brother also thank you my sister just keep them lifted up the ushers are going to put a card into your hand and we're going to pray we're about to pray is any other person in the hall in the gallery you have heard this message you 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 even feel you are confused i'm not sure if i'm in or out surrender today make it permanent today be sure today just lift up your hands glory to god and father just repeat after me and say father i thank you for giving your life for me for dying in my place and as me for resurrecting for my justification i receive your sacrifice today i believe that you died i accept your love and your life i accept the eternal life of god it lives in me thank you heavenly father because i'm now born again and i'm a child of god i will never die again i will live forever with christ thank you heavenly father in jesus mighty name we are prayed Hallelujah. Can we celebrate Jesus?